What's going on everybody? This is Brian from SneakerFiles.com recapping the news and before I give you a breakdown of all the stories that are in this video, like always, greatly appreciate a thumbs up and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting the red button below. Now in this video, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but what I can tell you is there's a lot more topics, aka sneakers, that we need to cover. Now before I go over some of the highlights, I just want to say rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, GG, and all the other families that were taken way too early due to the tragic accident that happened. It truly is heartbreaking. Now the biggest topic in this video, at least in my opinion, is that Nike has suspended sales of Kobe related items that includes any type of sneakers, clothing, you name it. We're going to break down an article written by ESPN and go over that as well and what it means for the future of Kobe's line. Other than that, we have a good amount from Nike, a ton from Jordan brand, including a detailed look at the upcoming Dior Air Jordan 1 High OG, and then a few things from Adidas. And now without wasting too much more of your time, let's jump into the news. Starting this video off with Adidas, and we have on-feet images of the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Flax. Now this pair features a light brown upper, but it looks more like yellow. Constructed with prime knit, we also have a translucent side stripe. And that shows off a more vibrant yellow and a very similar shade lands on the heel pull tab. Currently, a release date for this pair is unknown, but they are expected to drop spring 2020 and the retail price will be 220. Next up, we have a first look at the Adidas Easy Boost 350 V2 Cinder Reflective. For those that don't know, there's going to be a non-reflective and reflective pair releasing of the Cinder. And going over this pair, it appears that it features mostly black throughout. And even the non-reflective looks very similar to the reflective, but the side stripe is where you'll see the most difference on the surface. Now, although we don't have images showing us the reflective upper, I do believe that will be the biggest difference between the reflective and the non-reflective. Other than that, this pair is completed with a gum rubber outsole. Once again, we don't have a release date, but this pair is expected to release spring 2020 and the retail price will be 220. Last up from Adidas, we have a release date for the Adidas Easy Boost 350 V2 Marsh. Now it appears at first there was some sort of mix up. The Marsh was being labeled Flax and the Flax was being labeled Marsh. Both are somewhat similar, but this pair features a different shade of yellow throughout. And then we have orange on the liner and almost a shade of gray on the side stripe. Now as for a release date, February 1st is the rumored release date for now. And on that day, they will be available exclusively at Yeezy Supply. Now as for a wider release later down the road, I'm unsure of that as of now, but more information coming soon. Coming soon is a new colorway of the Nike Kyrie 6, and this pair is being called Oracle Aqua due to its colorway, which is Oracle Aqua, black and opti yellow. As you can see, that aqua till shade is blasted throughout. And then on the midfoot strap, we have both leopard and tiger print used. In addition, we have orange accents throughout as well as yellow and then black lands on the branding. A release date is currently scheduled for February 1st and the retail price will be 130. In a previous video, I showcased a few photos of the Nike LeBron 17 James Gang. We now have the official images as well as a release date. And this pair is heavily inspired by the movie Friday the 13th. On the tongue, we have James Gang, which uses a similar font from the movie, as well as details on the insoles. Now, on the inside of the tongue, we do have a swoosh and it has blood dripping from it, which represents Jason's machete. Other details includes multicolored speckled detailing on the air unit, the lion head logo on the tongue. It's subtle, but the eyes are red, so it stands out more. And then we have a mostly white rubber outsole. So dropping February 21st, the retail price will be 200. Starting off the month of February, we have two colorways of the Nike Air Max 90 releasing, both having an OG vibe. The first comes dressed in white particle gray and rose pink. Now I believe in a previous video, I did showcase this shoe. And as you can see, they feature gray on the overlays, black on the mudguard, white mesh on the toe and around the ankle. 
Now this pair is completed with rose pink accents throughout. Dropping February 1st, retail price will be 120 and these will also be available in both men's and women's sizing. Now the next pair has pretty much the same color blocking but it comes just in white, particle gray, and hyper royal. So with this pair we have the same materials used as well as the colors but it features hyper royal. So everywhere the rose pink featured rose pink, the hyper royal will feature hyper royal. Once again they'll also release in the OG style build and they also drop on February 1st, retail price will be 120 this was probably one of the most hardest articles I had to put together. And this is the official images of the Nike Kobe 5 Pro Tro Big Stage. Now images actually leaked on Sunday, right before the tragic accident happened. I was woken up by my girlfriend and she let me know what happened and I was in complete shock and I felt terrible for all the families that were affected and are affected by this. The people lost, it was just a tragic situation. I didn't work at all on Sunday, I decided not to write articles, I decided not to put a video together. However, when I did return Monday, I shared these photos of the Kobe 5 Pro Tro big stage because there are people that actually are fans of Kobe and want to buy his shoes to wear or even have in their personal collection. Maybe they connect with Kobe because he was so much more than just basketball. Now there was a rumored release date and that release date was for February 7th. I also stated that in the previous video, but honestly, after what happened, I'm entirely unsure if Nike is going to go ahead and release this pair. More information will be up in just a moment, but if Nike does decide to release this shoe, the retail price will be 180, and I definitely will make sure to let everybody know on the details. Now, why this shoe is special, he wore the Kobe 5 during his last NBA championship. As well, this pair is a mashup of both the original home and away pairs that Kobe Bryant wore, as well as the Parade PE. Last night, I went on to Nike's website to search and see what they had as far as Kobe related products, and every pair they had was sold out. Even the pairs that were sitting prior to his passing, everything was gone. At that time, they also had LA Lakers Nike gift cards. Now I know a lot of you have seen the recent price hike for Kobe Bryant shoes, not just his signature line, but even the Air Jordan 9 Kobe, the price is just crazy high. Now this isn't just sneakers. I've seen it on jerseys, basketball cards, even Funko Pops. So anything related to Kobe Bryant, the price has gone up. And I'll give my opinion on that later on if anybody cares about it. If not, you can fast forward. And the next topics we're going to talk about is Jordan Brand. But last night, ESPN put out an article titled Nike Suspends Online Sell of Kobe Bryant Related Products. Now this article is pretty long, but I'm going to read some of it because I feel that it's very, very important. It reads, in the wake of Kobe Bryant's death, Nike has decided to pull all Kobe related items from its Nike.com web store, company sources confirmed to ESPN. For now, searches for Bryant's footwear provide one result, a purple and yellow Nike gift card bearing the Los Angeles Lakers logo. The company is reevaluating its ongoing strategy for releasing Bryant's signature shoe series and in the interim, it would prefer to limit resellers' ability to stockpile an inventory of existing products only to sell them on the secondary market at elevated prices. Throughout the company, Bryant's imprint is being reflected on with the gravity of his death weighing heavily across Nike's global office spaces. Bryant was more than just an endorsing athlete at Nike. He was a true partner working in tandem with executives, designers, developers, and employees throughout the swoosh's corporate structure since he joined the company in 2003. On Monday at the Nike World Headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon, thousands gathered throughout the day around a 35-foot poster of Bryant that overlooks the south bank of the campus, Lake Nike. In a variety of Kobe sneakers from his 11-model run during his playing career and the six-model post-career portion of the series that was named Kobe AD, employees left flowers and memorabilia at a makeshift visual. Nike plans to launch a new celebratory colorway of the Kobe 5 Pro Tro in the coming weeks, 
with the white, black, and trophy gold edition slated for February 7th release. The colors combine the home white and away black versions of the Kobe 5 worn by Bryant in the 2010 NBA Finals, in which he collected his fifth and final championship ring, along with the graphics incorporated into the pair of Kobe Spies he wore during the Lakers championship parade. The brand is discussing whether to go forward with a release as planned or postpone the launch according to sources. In addition to Nike's reluctance to profit from Bryant's likeliness during the aftermath of his death, several sneaker consignment stores around the country have taken similar approaches. We will not be selling any Kobe's till further notice, Riff Los Angeles announced in a statement. All Kobe's have been pulled off the floor and all online orders have been returned. Las Vegas-based Urban Necessities sent out an email to sellers on Sunday evening clarifying its approach to Kobe's products and restricting sellers from hiking prices on existing listings. On some secondary marketplaces, prices for Bryant sneakers and memorabilia have seen a 200 to 300% spike over the past 24 hours. Due to the recent passing of Kobe Bryant and our respect for his family and legacy, we will not allow price changes on Kobe items that are consigned, the company wrote. With that being said, there has been a lot of people I've seen going around posting false information. And just like the title said, Nike suspended the online sales for Kobe Bryant related products. They did not stop forever. It's just for the time being. I do think eventually they'll start selling them again as they should because there are a lot of people that are true fans of Kobe Bryant. And those people definitely deserve to continue to buy his shoes, jerseys, even t-shirts with the Los Angeles Lakers logo and Bryant on the back, stuff like that. What I don't agree with is the instant reselling of these sneakers after he passes. Now, I'm not against reselling sneakers. If that's what you do, that's what you do. I don't personally do it, but I don't have a problem with it. I understand we live in a society where if something is limited and hard to get and people want it, then it's going to be resold. This isn't just sneakers. I've seen it once again across many avenues and I'm sure you guys have as well. My issue is if you have a pair of Kobe's and you see the price going up and then you put them up for sale after his passing, just because of his passing and jack up the price, that's wrong. Now, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they want to do. I personally can't stop anybody, but my personal collection, I have a lot of Kobe's in dead stock condition. I was huge on the Kobe 7 and the Kobe 8, and those will forever be in my collection. I don't care at what price they go up to, I'm not selling. Now, there is a few cases where if you do decide to resell, I feel it could be a good cause. For example, if you resell his shoes and you donate the proceeds to the Kobe and Vanessa Bryant Family Foundation, I can respect that. I have seen some auctions where it says that the money will be donated to Kobe's and Vanessa's foundation. At the end of the day, like I said, everybody is going to do what they want to do. If they want to resell his shoes, they're going to resell them. And I'm not telling you to do it or not do it, but I'm going to say where my morals stand and where my collection is and how many Kobe's I have, there's no chance of me doing that. Either way, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. RIP to Kobe Bryant, GG, and all the other families that were taken during this tragic accident. All right, so now we're on to Jordan Brand. I really got to snap out of that because a lot has been brewing, especially with Kobe Bryant, and I just feel terrible. But here we have the Jordan Why Not 0.3 LA Born. This is for Russell Westbrook. He will wear the shoe during All-Star Weekend. This pair acts as a multi-tribute shoe, which will be to the 90s as well as the nickname, and that's to where Westbrook was born, LA. As you can see, it features a very flashy theme. By the hill, we have somewhat like elephant print. It's not quite. And then we have bright yellow and pink on the rubber outsole. So not only is Westbrook wearing this pair during All-Star Weekend, but they will release. And that will take place on February 16th. And the retail price is set at 130. Official images of the Jordan Max 200 Super Bowl LIV has arrived. And this pair is part of the Super Bowl 54 pack, which includes the Air Jordan 10 and the Jordan Max 200. Now, later on in the video, I'm going to speak on the Air Jordan 10, but first, 
This pair comes constructed with light and breathable mesh. And the Max 200 air unit is added for response and additional cushioning. Now the whole Super Bowl theme here is for Miami, Florida, which is where Super Bowl 54 will take place. It incorporates a bold Everglades print as well as using vibrant shades throughout. As for a release date, this pair drops on January 31st and the retail price will be 125. After the release of the OG white and black pair, Jordan Brand will also release another colorway of the Air Jordan Women's OG. This model first released back in 1998 and has returned for the first time in 2020. For the next colorway, it comes highlighted in Barely Rose. As you can see, it features a very, very light shade of pink while constructed with black mesh and the same shade lands on the laces, liner, and rubber outsole. Across the upper, we have suede, and as for the release details, this pair doesn't have a release date. I know the white and black pair did. They released earlier this month, and unfortunately, we don't have a release date for this one. Once that information is available, I'll make sure to throw that in the next video, and the retail price will be 140 While there's quite a few shoes in this video we don't have release dates for, the Air Jordan 1 Mid Disco Ball, we do have a release date. And this shoe might not be for everybody, however, I'm sure there's a handful of people that may like them. Now, if you look closer, they feature a mirrored square cut upper, which resembles that of a disco ball. In addition, they have red velvet as well as black velvet, and this pair seems to be inspired by the 92nd Academy Awards, which takes place on February 9th. Now, if you're looking to grab this shoe, they drop on February 1st. You will be able to grab them on Nike sneakers, and the retail price will be $125. As of late, we're seeing a lot more colorways of the Air Jordan 1 low release, including a few special releases, which includes the Chinese New Year Air Jordan 1 low and the Dior Air Jordan 1 low. Now, if you're not a fan of those two, you might be a fan of these two, one or the other, or maybe you're just not a fan of the Air Jordan 1 low at all. But for those that are, we have a look at the upcoming black cyber pair, as well as a pair highlighted in magenta. Now going over the shoes, they come constructed with mostly leather. We have black around the toe, eye stays, tongue, and swoosh, while white lands on the panels, toe, and midsole. Following, we have Cyber, which is more of a yellowish green type hue that covers the heel and ankle while constructed with suede and utilizes perforations. It also lands on the Jumpman branding on the tongue, liner, laces, and rubber outsole. As for a release date for this pair, it doesn't have one, but more than likely it won't. It'll start showing up at retailers soon, and when they get them, they'll throw them on the shelf. Now, for our second Air Jordan 1 load to go over, the color blocking is just like the black cyber pair, constructed with leather throughout, white lands on the panel, toe, and midsole, and then we have black on the top of the tongue, eye stays around the toe, and swoosh. Finishing this pair is magenta, which is applied to the laces, liner, Jordan on the tongue, rubber outsole around the heel, and the ankle. Once again, around the heel and ankle will feature perforated suede. As well, this pair does not have a release date, but just like the black cyber pair, more than likely this pair won't have a release date once Nike retailers get them in, they'll throw them on the shelf, and that should be coming very soon. Official images of the Air Jordan 10 Super Bowl 54 has also arrived, and they will release right before the Super Bowl, which will take place on February 2nd. Now, before I give you the release date, just to go over this pair, they feature a canvas upper. We have cell up top, and then on the panels, as well as the overlays, we have Everglade print throughout. Now, for the liner and inside of the tongue, it's a light shade of pink. And then on the hill pull tabs, we have a shade of till, kind of gives it that South Beach Miami vibe. We also have the Everglades print used across the insole, and the outsole will be made up of gum, pink, and till. Overall, I'm actually a fan of this shoe. I think it was well put together, and although the outsole is not entirely gum, I think it looks good on the Air Jordan 10. Now, that's just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments below. And for those that want to grab this pair, January 31st is the release date and retail price will be $190. You'll be able to grab them on Nike sneakers. In February, the Off-White Air Jordan 5 will release. 
specifically during All-Star Weekend. Now there was a few things I wanted to go over with this because in the last videos when I spoke about this shoe, it was always about the adult sizes, but come to find out, they're also going to be available in preschool and toddler sizes. So you can get a pair for the whole family as long as you can actually get the shoe because I know that people are going to be going crazy over them. They're not gonna be a GR, so they won't be just available. And overall, both the toddler and preschool sizes will pretty much look exactly like the adult sizes. Also from these images, what we can see is that the preschool sizing will also come with the hang tag and the toddler sizing, it doesn't show it with the hang tag. So I'm not entirely sure if it'll be included, but I'm sure if you plan on getting these for your kids or younger siblings, then that won't matter at all. Now, unfortunately, I don't know the retail prices as of yet for the two. I should have that information soon. Now for the adult pair, the retail price will be 225 and all the sizes, including adult, preschool and toddler will be available on February 15th. I also expect these to be available in grade school sizing. So really you could have your whole family wearing this pair as long as you can actually get them. But like I mentioned in the previous video, I plan on doing a video dedicated to this release where you can buy. I'll drop links in the description, all that good stuff. So it'll be made really easy. And from there, you just gotta hope that luck is on your side. Last up, we have a detailed look at the upcoming Dior Air Jordan 1 High OG. Prior to this video, we've gotten images here and there of the shoes, but this of course I feel is our best look yet. So I did want to showcase them. Now I've been hearing so many different rumors about this pair, it's crazy. So what I will say is that what Jordan brand has confirmed so far is that they will release during April. Everything else at the time of shooting is just a rumor, but the original rumor was that the retail price would be 2000 and they would also be limited to a thousand pairs. Now, I honestly believe that there'll be more than a thousand pairs available because even at the $2,000 price tag, they could easily sell out 10,000 pairs. There's a lot of people with deep pockets that would definitely buy them. Not me, my pockets are not that deep. Another part of this rumor, now it could be one or the other that the shoe is limited to 8,500 pairs or the retail price will be 8,500. Both of those numbers will be a tribute to when the Air Jordan 1 originally released in 1985, so 8,500. Now, I personally believe that it'll be cheaper than 8,500, but only time will tell. But overall, I actually like this pair, not because it's Dior, but just the simple color blocking, I think it's clean. And then the detailing on the swoosh, it allows it to pop some more. Also, this pair will come with a special hang tag. It'll feature Air Dior branding throughout, as well as a translucent outsole. Now, from these photos, you could also see on the liner, there's a special patch, which reads Miami. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that. It could be that certain pairs are being allocated to certain areas so maybe this pair was meant to be sold in Miami and other pairs in different locations will feature let's say Los Angeles New York City stuff like that but I'm just speculating on that part and like I mentioned right now they are rumored to release during April once more information is available that will go into the next video but let me know your thoughts on this pair in the comment section below and that recaps the news. Like always, we post it first on sneakerfiles.com and then we take it to YouTube. Like always, I appreciate you guys for watching this video. And on a side note, I want to say, please do not believe everything you see online. I'm seeing a lot of fabricated stories about retailers. One that's going around that actually bothers me is that a person is claiming that the Nike outlet has removed all of Kobe Bryant sneakers and the reason they did that was to mark the price up. This individual is obviously looking for attention aka clout of some sort. That isn't the case at all. Now I don't know if Nike outlets are actually removing Kobe's signature shoes from the shelves but what I can say is that they're definitely not marking up the prices. I've seen some other stories, but I can't think of them on the top of my head. I probably should have saved them. Also, I think the NBA should do something this year to remember Kobe Bryant. I think maybe even if it's just for the year, they change the logo. Maybe during All-Star Weekend, they make the West the number 24 and the East the number 8 or something. But you guys probably understand what I'm trying to get at. 
And before I end this video, once again, I just want to say rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, Gigi, and all the others that were tragically killed in that accident. With that being said, I really do appreciate you guys for watching this. I try to keep my personal opinions about shoes out of things as well as politics, but on this subject, I felt like I needed to add a little bit more. So I hope you guys understand. But with that being said, once again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com. And if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe.